Hey everybody, if I had a dollar for every time someone asked me, I don't know, or said to me, I don't know how you do, you nurses do it, I could have retired long ago. And so that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about spreading the word about nature, how restorative, restorative it is, and healing, and fun, and today I want to share some more wisdom with you with my friend Nurse Keith here. He has Hi, a podcast and a blog, and he's a nurse coach, so he helps nurses all the time. And so I wanted to get some information from Nurse Keith here and see how he uses nature to, for his own self-care, and maybe some of his tips can help you. All right. Shoot. <laughs> so tell us about daily practices. What what do you do daily within nature, or, or are there things? Yeah. Daily practices. Um, well, I live in the desert, the high desert of Santa Fe, New Mexico, and my wife and I rent a house on five acres out in the middle of, um, it's basically juniper bushes and dirt and rocks for the most part. And it's actually quite pretty. It's just different for those of you who live in a more lush type of environment like we used to. And I go outside and I've had a broken leg the last few months so I don't like go for long walks these days, but I go outside and I just listen. So it's pretty quiet where we live. We can barely hear the highway once in a blue moon when the wind shifts and our road is rural. So we get about 12 or 15 cars a day, which is pretty nice. So it's pretty quiet. So at my home, I can go outside. I'm very blessed and privileged, I know that. But I can go outside and just sit and listen to the quiet, the sounds of the um, goats next door. I hear a horse whinny once in a blue moon. I hear coyotes sometimes in the early morning or in, at the night, in the nighttime. So right outside my house, I have uh, I have this opportunity. And the other thing I do is I go outside at nighttime, and New Mexico has some of the cleanest air in the country. And we're at Santa Fe's 7,000 feet above sea level. So I go outside and just look at the stars, and we can see a lot of stars. And the Milky Way's right above our house. Well, it's over a lot of people's homes, not just us. We're not that <laughs> special. And uh, I look at the stars. I mean, it's amazing. There's a lot of science behind <clears throat> the power of awe and awe in nature. So I would imagine that the stars, we, where I am, it's a lot of light pollution. So when it just happens to be a really dark night and it, the, it works out, um, I really make an extra effort to go out and see the stars. Like even in this setting, we're here in uh, St. Pete's Beach, Florida. It's for, pretty good. <laughs> we finished the conference for the National Nurses in Business Conference yesterday and we'll be taking off to go back home. And uh, if any of you nurses are out there that want to learn more about it, definitely get in touch with us because it's awesome. Um, but tell us more, like when, if you have, I find for me, and let me know what you think, is when it's really a really tough um, patient situation or personal situation, how has nature backed you up and, and well, kept you together? Nature's always backed me up, even when we lived in a more suburban and then also urban situation. I'd find, if I look back in my life, like even back to when I was a teenager, I always went to nature. Like when I lived in the suburbs of New Jersey as a teenager, I'd sometimes skip school, hop on my bike, pack a backpack, and I would ride to um, Holmdel Park in central New Jersey. I would hang out at the park and well sometimes I didn't skip school but sometimes I did and I go to the park and that's where I got restored so I realized even as a teenager I didn't think about it it's just where I went I would go to the park and when I lived in Massachusetts I would go to water and living in the high desert you think man if you love water why in the high desert it's because it's beautiful and like my wife says, the, the sky is our ocean because we have this big, beautiful, emerald blue sky above us all the time. We get 325 days of sun a year in Santa Fe. So, sorry folks. Um, and uh, <laughs> that's one reason we stay because it's dry and it's beautiful and the air is clean and the stars are there and I can get refreshed in different ways. And we also go to water. We drive to the Rio Grande River. We drive up to 
lakes that are all within an hour of our house. I wish they were closer, but um, I often will go to water. Like when my wife and I are feeling really fried, we'll pack a bag and a picnic and we drive to Georgia O'Keeffe country out near Abiquiu, New Mexico. And we go to the lake and we go to the river and that's where we really get refreshed. And camping is really one of the ways we totally unplug. And we generally only camp in places where there's no services and no cell phone service. So when we go camping, it's like, I put a vacation responder on my email accounts and we are gone. Awesome. Sometimes for days. Do you find, because there's research that suggests and shows that um, camping is good to restore your sleep pattern? Really? Do you okay. find that resets your sleep or make um, you, makes you sleep better? I'm not sure if it resets my sleep because I sleep relatively well, but um, there's I love sleeping outside more than anything. And sometimes, depending where we go, sometimes we won't even sleep in a tent. We'll just sleep on camping cots from REI um, outside. Um, there's some areas where we camp where there's a high level of probability of running into a rattlesnake, mm. so then we'll sleep in a tent. <laughs> but if we're in places where we know it's not like big snake country, and I do have somewhat of a phobia, um, we'll sleep outside. Mm -hmm. And I love, like, our tent is completely clear on the top. It's just all mesh on the top. So we can watch the stars at night if it's not raining, and. Sometimes we have to run outside and put the rain tarp on because it starts <laughs> raining. But we never like to go to sleep in a tent with the tarp over it unless it's raining at the time. Uh -huh. So even then, like waking up with like a little rain hitting my face is not like the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I find I get so rested because where we go camping, it's way out in the middle of nowhere. I mean like way out. And there's no lights, there's no cell phones. I mean, the closest town is probably 20 miles away and the closest city is over 100 miles away. So it is dark. And I have to say, darkness is really restorative. Like if you can experience darkness, like true darkness, it is, it'll, it'll really blow your mind actually. And I think there's a restfulness and peacefulness that comes from experiencing utter darkness. It's not scary, it's really beautiful. All that's becoming as this global population grows more and more of a luxury, what you talk about darkness and quiet and peaceful and just basic raw nature is getting harder and harder to find. But that's when true. You, so it is more of a conscious effort to get out there for many of us. Um, that's so true. And you're so fortunate to have found your spot where you can yeah, with that a lot. I'm, I'm very privileged, I, I admit it, and, um, you know, some people in, in less privileged circumstances, you know, refugees, there's so many different people who, they don't even have the time or wherewithal to think about these things because they're really focused on survival. Mm -hmm. We are privileged as relatively middle class white Americans that we can think about these things, like, I'm going to go out to nature and get restored because we can, mm -hmm. and I don't. I don't ignore the fact that I can do that. And one thing I'll tell your viewers, your listeners, and your fans, and your tribe is that um, there are places that are designated dark sky sites in the United States. Um, there's several in, in New Mexico. And if you want to have that experience, you can actually make it happen. And you can Google designated dark sky sites or whatever. And there are several in New Mexico. And there's a few ice that are still on my list that are so remote that you can actually drive to them, that you can experience that kind of darkness and wildness. And it is, it's, it is awe-inspiring, and that awe is, I think, is very important to me. You hit on a point which I've been thinking about a lot for a couple of years now about, and uh, Oprah talked about this in one of her Super Soul um, Sunday interviews. And she interviewed someone who grew up in the inner city, and having worked at Yale New Haven in the inner city and seeing the issues that happen with uh, inner city youth, um, they have nowhere to escape all the stress. Like you talked about, you hopped on your bike. I used to go out in the woods and just make camps and forest <laughs> things and whatever. Right. And I 
can't help but wonder if some of those inner city kids would not turn to crime if they had nature to escape to and hopefully that is part of what my mission will start to tap more into and I know there are some starting um, organizations that are doing that but I think we, we, as a society I think it's a, a population that we really may want to give a hand to on that aspect. So. That's, that's true and when you live in what some of us might characterize as a concrete jungle where there's mm -hmm. very few trees around and very little green that does impact your psyche and there is research on how even having green in your in your line of sight out your window of your home and your workplace really makes a difference and there is research I'm seeing recently about hospital environments healthcare environments mm -hmm. that bringing greenery and the ability to see nature and not be in a hermetically sealed box is a really healing thing and when I did some community development work in Jamaica, very rural Jamaica, um, I still have friends and a godchild there. Um, their hospital is open, like there are all these open windows and in the wards, even though it's a very poor hospital, the, the fresh sea air blows through this hospital 24 hours a day. Oh, that sounds delightful. And they close the windows <laughs> when it gets cold, like if it's down to 60, they close the windows because they get cold. But there's, it's that Florence Nightingale notion of fresh air, mm -hmm. and they embrace it, and I think it's really wonderful. And even in a hotel like we are here, I notice the windows can't be open, mm -hmm. so I've been leaving my door open all the time. And it's not private, but it's like, I need the air, <laughs> and I wanna see outside and feel the air come in. Mm -hmm. So I've been leaving my door open a lot, and it's, it's so important. Well. We're going to close here. Um, Keith is a testament to using nature to for your own self-care because he has been a nurse for how many years now? 21. 21. And yeah. in an age where so many of us are experiencing burnout and stress, um, I think the proof is in the pudding and, and this is a great example. So I appreciate you sharing your story. Tell us a little bit about where we can find you. Oh, the best place to find me is nursekeith.com. You'll find links to RNFM Radio, our group podcast that's all about nursing. I have several co-hosts there. The Nurse Keith Show is the other place you can find me, and I'm all over Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Just come out and say hi, and nursekeith.com is definitely the central place to find what you need to know about me. Awesome. Well, I'm Sue Allison Dean, the Nature Nurse, and thank you for listening, and we hope some of these tips help. And if you have tips of your own, feel free to share them in the comments. Thanks. Have a great day. Adios.